So, we're going to talk about a little bit about water leaks and water damage. Unfortunately, in this Jayco, this is actually a rear bunk model. So the beds up front had a leak from the outside. It ended up down, going down and rotting out the floor. So upon inspection, this corner right up here, nice and soft. Hard to tell if you can see that happening, but yeah, see how squishy that is? And over here, it's not going anywhere. So this floor, you can see that there, is gone. All the floor underneath this is rotted out. So we're going to talk a little bit and go through the steps. Maybe a multi-part video, not sure. And we're going to fix it. So you can do it yourself, save yourself some money because RVs aren't cheap. They aren't getting any cheaper. And... They can get expensive to fix. So the first step in doing all this is getting all this stuff out of here. Because we're going to have to peel up the floor to fix that wood and replace it. So we're going to start by getting the mattress out of the way. Picking this up here. And we're going to take all this out. So everything. All the equipment's got to come out. We're going to take this whole bed rail, that end cap, that's all going to come off. So it's always just screw down on the floor pretty simple screws everywhere is screws and staples so we're going to take the screws out try to take the assembly out piece by piece and brackets we're probably going to peel those out with those staples out of there take the screws out where it's at and take everything apart so we're going to get that all out of there we're going to try to keep the inverter in place because we like to take battery cables out and that's part of the charging system <coughs> But everything else is going to have to go because the flooring in this side needs to get pulled up. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to get all this stuff out of the way. And we'll check back in as progress goes on. So now that we got the mattress out of the way, the next step of the process is to get this uh, board out of the way, the hinge board. So we got tools we need, pocket screwdriver, Phillips head drill driver. Uh, you can use a regular Phillips screwdriver if you want. I prefer the, the powered flavor. You've got the screws for the hinges right across the top. Both sides, eight screws, pop them off. Then we go down inside and take the hydraulic struts off. And that, you come up here, bring it up. Down here, you can either take it by the screws right there and take it off and take it off as an assembly. Or you take your pocket screwdriver, go underneath the clip, like that, just like that, peel that clip back, and then you can pop the strut off nice and easy. So it does come off relatively easy. You can just take the strut off straight, leave the hooks on there, leave the brackets on there. You can just take the brackets off with the struts. It's really a personal preference and how you want to do it. But get that out of there, we'll get this board out of the way, and we'll talk about the next step. Now we got the bed and everything out of the way. We got all this extra room for activities. I just simply disconnected the shock from the top of the bed and let it hang. So we're gonna start, get these wall panels out of the way. This is the first part of the jigsaw puzzle. So this panel right here is secured on by a one screw at the top right there. Nothing at the bottom, as you can see, but on the inside we've got four, floor. This bracket will peel out of the way and there is actually a screw right below the aluminum. So once we peel that out of the way, we'll get that screw off and that will disconnect this panel from that assembly over there. And then this one has floor, floor. We're gonna get this wood divider out of the way. And then floor and same screw across the top here. And that will get this section out of there. And we'll keep working. We'll end up getting this uh, a nightstand out of here too. And we got this out. And it'll be an easy just to take the whole entire assembly out of the way so we don't have to worry about that. It gives more room for it to move the floor over and not have any sharp edges. Some people will like to put tape on the floor to mark where the edges are, but as you can see, this has got some use. You can actually see the line where the wall used to be and where it isn't. And I always think there's screw holes. When you start putting the screws back in the exact same spot, they will line up the wall for reassembly to go back in where it was. So we're gonna leave it just out like that. The lower wall will protect the inverter if we bump it or anything like that, so we're not too worried. But yeah, inverter is there, that's where they had it mounted. 
So we're going to keep continuing on and take that apart. And this assembly right here, taking the whole, are you laying down, taking a nap joke to the next level? We got screws right there, screw right there. And we come up to the back wall, we got a screw, screw, screw. And then right there as well. That'll get us all off the wall to be able to take this box assembly off to take the next step and try to get the floor up. So, tear down is almost complete. We got that out of there. Still got the cable for the inverter that they had run to the inverter from the inverter controller. That can stay, that's not gonna be a problem. So far, the only tools we've used is the pocket screwdriver, the drill driver with the Phillips head, so really just a Phillips screwdriver. And then we had to break out the Wonder Bar. Nice big flat pry bar because for whatever reason, it seems absolutely ridiculous. That right there, that screw hanging out of there. So that goes from the outside in. So before they even put the outer wall, the outer gated corrugated steel on there and the insulation, everything else, this assembly was done. Cabinet was installed with a screw from the outside and then hooked into that cabinet. So the Wonder Bar had to be used to pry it off because I'm not taking the outer skin off the camper just to remove a cabinet. And we will just secure it with a screw from the inside going out in the same location. And it'll work just fine. But we got it all done and everything is taken apart. Very fuel tools needed. It's so just about anybody can do it. Last step we're gonna do is get this trim molding removed. Gives us a little bit extra room to get at the edges because the way they install this flooring is the floor goes down first, goes all the way to the edge of the floor, and they actually build the walls on top of it. So you'd have to take the whole entire wall off to get to the edge of the vinyl to peel it back. So we're just going to cut underneath the wall as far back as we can, peel it back, and then we'll staple it back down on the edges to make sure expansion contraction doesn't pull it back away from the gap. And then this trim should cover any staples and excess that you have cut off. Simple removal of that is you just kind of go down the line. Work with a screwdriver, peel it away, keep working on down the line. That's the way to do it, or you won't break the trim. So you can save the trim, and if you're very careful, the staple stays straight, and you can reinstall the staples back in the exact same holes they came out of Tap it in with a hammer, and it'll look just like it was from the factory. And that's all there is to it. So we're gonna get this trim off, and we'll start getting the floor up. All right, here we are, trim is removed. That'll give us some extra room to work with. If somebody really wanted to, they can go through and take all the interior cabinets and start pulling wall panels off and go that extra, pro extra distance. to get a little bit further underneath there, but I don't think it's necessary. I don't think there's anything to gain from doing any of that. So, so far, got a couple hours into it, got everything disassembled and ready to go. Next step is we're gonna pull up flooring. I think we're gonna make this a multi-part video and this will be part one of the floor rebuilding experience. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe.